Episode 10. Double figures here for the knockoff boys. We're joined here on the fine Wednesday afternoon in the Julius Studios. Knockoff podcast firing at you again. Joined to my uh, my left, Danny the regular. He's back. G'day, Matt. How are you, mate? Across from the table here, we got uh, Benny. He's come back for his second crack. You might remember him from episode four, listeners. No one Benji, on what's up, Thanks. buddy? We got a rookie. He's on the other end of the table. We got four guests coming at you. We got four hot mics. Dave Rose, welcome aboard. Good evening, boys. Thanks for the invite. There no we worries, go. man. Pleasure to have you on. We've brought Dave and Benny on as straight-up finals footy analysts. Both of these guys, all four of us sitting around the table as passionate rugby league fans. Straight off the top, though, I think would be remiss if we didn't touch on the UFC because your boy Briss landed another motherfucking prediction, baby. <laughs> Stick mark. We've had a few cards since the, uh, since the last podcast. We have, yeah. We took a took a brief sabbatical last week. We came up with, with a double episode after with Drew and Justin back to back. So we uh, we freshened up, got the enthusiasm back, and uh, straight off the top, we've got a new world heavyweight champion in the UFC. No, and still, still, still. actually, and still, I correct. It was like over Steve, him. Uh, st- yeah, yeah. Well, he looked it for <laughs> he a second. He looked it for a second. I thought I thought I'd have had two from two with that because I did uh, I did get the goal over goal prediction over CM Punk. You did, man. To, to a T. I got the rear naked inside three minutes, which he was able to do. I just, I saw that coming a mile away after watching Gaul's debut. I just thought, again, coming up against a guy who's a white belt, he's brown. It's it was a no brainer for me. So happy to get that one. And I thought for a second, after I had predicted over him to win, he dropped Stepe in that first round and I and gets a hold of the neck. I thought it might have been all she wrote at that point, but full credit to Stepe. Fuck yeah, man! It was a um, it was a pretty wild card, eh? There was a lot of controversy, like particularly the uh, Vadum Travis Brown fight, like all that shit mm. that went on with Edmund at the end. It was it was entertaining, but yeah, strange strange card in a lot of ways. I think definitely but C- CM man, yeah, it didn't um, it didn't go according to plan. That's for sure. Like just that real easy takedown looked pretty pretty fucking amateur he, he did show heart you got to give him that he oh, made the 100 percent. i there. respect the dude yeah. Yeah. like if he, he, straight away he found himself in bad position he was eating bad ground and pound and he he weathered that for a bit fought off the first uh choke and inevitably it happened I, just for me i don't i obviously it's a, having never made the walk myself he would have been full of adrenaline he just fucking bum rushed Mickey Gall straight off the bell, like just chased him with a big right haymaker, like a la high street body, fight, high style. body height as well. Yeah, high body height just threw this sort of right hand that was never going to connect like that Game early, that early on in a fight, and just run straight into the fucking Mickey Gall's wheelhouse. Yeah, like he's, but he I mean, loves the ground. But watching that replay back of him dropping his body height to ta- to shoot for the double leg, it was so fucking quick, man. That I was thinking. If I had gone in there with all my best intentions to, you know, fucking knock this dude's block off and he had dropped that quick on me and shot a double leg and took me down, I would have been fucking defenseless just in the same way. It just really exposes like, you know, these guys are fighting. Granted, these guys were sort of midway on a card because of CM's status. But, uh, you know, Mickey Gore before that was, you know, he's he's 2-0. and oh, So he's a prelim fight past spec fighter. And uh, you'd think, oh, yeah, these guys are sort of at the lower end of the scale, but they would just fucking maul any sort of, like, everyday Joe just cruising around on the street That's sort of it. thing. It's, it's a good... It was, you're dead right. It is a, almost a good social experiment for all the fucking casual wa- wannabe tough guys out yeah. there sort of thing. You see a guy who dedicated himself to martial arts for two years, Dave. This guy came across from the WWE to have a crack at 37 years old. Never trained in any martial arts. He'd only sort of play wrestling. Suffered a back and injury uh, in the half of that, that two years. Right. He had to take Tom off for surgery. He had 18 months and came out and got choked inside three minutes. So Actually it's a good... good that, yeah, yeah, it's, yeah. It's, one of the good, it's a good thing, I guess, to look into how just an average Joe walking off the street. Like this guy dedicated himself for two years in an elite team under elite coaching and just got run through. So was, I mean, it's a bit already, of reality check, eh? He was already, already an athlete, kind of, you know, in the WWE, wasn't he? Yeah, yeah definitely. So, so good, good athlete, but it, and then it that's d- what people well, were saying. You know, go, yeah, you know. that's what people were saying going in. You know, you can't you can't fault the guy's work ethic. He's an athlete. He knows how to train. He's done like I mean, say what you will about professional wrestling, but they're still doing. It's still a demanding thing. You can't just be like a lazy fuck who's completely unathletic and and go in and do well in the WWE. You mm-hmm. know, like. It's um, it's a feat, like a physical feat, regardless. But yeah, fuck, wasn't um, wasn't enough to to compete at that level in MMA. Right. That's for sure. It doesn't uh, it doesn't buy your ticket just being athletic. And I think Mickey Gall summed it up the best at the end. He said, "Look, 
I fought an amateur and now I'm ready to fight the pros because right. it was his first fight yeah, ever. He's fought like, two cans. Let's let's just call yeah, the spade a spade here. Fucking anywhere <laughs> and calling out corny uh, Sage Northcutt oh, and the whole banter uh, between them about their hair and I stuff. I just yeah. couldn't get over his uh, his post fight speech where he was like. Not only swearing on the mic, but emphasizing the swears. Fuck. Like, that was his main point. Like, I'm not going fucking anywhere. <laughs> <laughs> it's true, though, man. It's like just full of adrenaline at fucking yeah. 22 in front of a big crowd. Like, I feel him, but um, you're talking about fighting Sage now. I think there's two Make young that guns. Fight, that, yeah. that sells itself, yeah. and that's mm. a good test for both of them. Good I versus think, bad, so. too, kind of seems now. Yeah, definitely. It is. It is. Definitely. It is. Another one from the weekend. So, progressing past that card, we saw. Dustin Poirier get his uh, run put to an end at lightweight mm, on yeah, the weekend by yeah. Michael Johnson. He Real fucking cleaned him up impressively. Yeah. Fuck yeah, man. That was a big, hard shot, that one, eh? Just multiple shots and then sort of standing over him too. I did, don't know how I felt about that, but full mm. of adrenaline. He has apologised since. Like, a lot of bad blood between those two fighters for those that didn't see it. And after Dustin Poirier st- laying there stiff on the ground, knocked out with the medical staff around him, Johnson's fucking coming to stand mm. over him and like, what, bitch? Like, what? Ah, like, oh, come on. But Do you know how many fights Poirier had had at 155 until he, he was on? A, he was on uh, a full four fight win streak. Think, wow. Yeah. And this was like the first credible top five. Uh, Pretty six. much, kind yeah. Of, yeah. Like yeah. The, uh, the most elite guy he'd fought, absolutely. I think he'd beat Yancey Medeiros and Joe Duffy. Yeah. There were no slouches yeah. Yeah, in yeah, their own right, but if you're looking at that weight division, that's fucking deep from mm. 1 to 15. So yeah. he's th- not really anywhere near the picture now, Johnson or Poirier. But, uh, that's it. I remember saying that because um, du- at that point, Dustin was coming on four four fight win streak, that if he had a beaten Michael Johnson convincingly, he would have made a big statement for himself in the rankings and for potential title shots. But... Wasn't wasn't to be mm. wasn't his. Poirier night. Alvarez would have been cool. <laughs> would have been. Oh, did you see Dana said Khabib's got yeah, the fight? Yeah, He's I saw that it, briefly eh? on Instagram like, this tweeted, afternoon. Tweeted like, nah, Khabib's got it, not Connor. That's true, right. True. And whether I don't know if that's still just a power play. I haven't seen any sort of like media releases whether it's actually making that official. That's just Dana replying to some guy on mm. Twitter. Or there I, seems yeah. to be a lot of like. Um, I don't know whether it's now you just have more access to the to the media around stuff, but there seems to be a lot more time that goes into trying to secure fights and fighters maybe negotiating their pay more or fucking... There seems to be like Rockhold came out and said mm. something like, I've got a fight in the wings, but the money's bullshit. Yeah, the um, fighters seem to be really uh, rallying se- several, against... Several other people, like, yeah. Yep. Jockeying for p- position more. Now that the show money's been released for some of these bigger guys on the big shows... People are seeing like, Connor's hey. getting paid and they're like, hey, I'll, I'll, I'll talk some shit on the fucking press conference yeah. if you're going to pay me those sort That's of... That's it. I'll, I'll, I'll dress well, sell it, and away we go. I think... Last one on the MMA, I think it would be uh, remiss of... Um, of us to not talk about uh, the American gangster. My bad guy. Chael P. Sonnen is now officially on the books at Bellator. Could you believe that? True. When I saw that news, I was just so shocked. I did not see that coming. Mm. And I'm stoked. I'm He's been, he'd been a company guy for the UFC all the way along. And I just think he'd have this contract that they've put together now for him would have been super impressive. I don't know if there's been a falling out with the UFC brass between him. Well, I don't think Some there, might, there, might, there, might, be, there might be something there, but he's that classy enough where he's not going to bring up that sort of thing. We'll mm. release yet anyway, mm. but uh, well, he, he can go He can go over there and have some fun fights in Bellator. Has he got a fight with Tito Ortiz? They're lining that up for November. Yeah. To, yeah. Yeah, it's, it seems like it's going to go that way, but there's other good fighters over there now. Like There's a good chance he might fight Rory McDonald at like 185 over there. <laughs> that, that, that might happen. Right. So There's, a, there's a Vandalay, isn't he? Yeah, Vandalay's looking at coming over. Maybe Fedor as well, yeah, but there's a, lot of, uh, there's a lot of prospects over for him just for fun fights. I mean... I just like it. I've sort of been a Chael fan, admittedly, from since day one. Really, when he sort of came onto the scene, went on, on his title run with beating Marquardt and Bisping and the like. But if he's over there, I'll I'll uh, Gee, Ill- illegally download his fights afterwards, <laughs> allegedly. <Like> gangster weight, <laughs> yeah, gang- gangster Torrey. gangster weight, son. <laughs> For the uh, we've t- we've touched on the UFC, but while we're really here, we've got. Four blokes sitting around the table that have all come down with a savage case of finals fever. <laughs> me mate Rosie sitting across the table from me as die-hard league fan. Does it still sting for the for the listeners at home? David is one of the most passionate Broncos men you will ever meet in your life, and uh, boy. Boy. for the casual fans, they were eliminated out of a semi-final by the North Queensland Cowboys, their arch rivals. 
guess, last yeah. Friday night in uh, what was an instant classic. What was your take, Dave? You feel a bit unlucky? You feel a bit hurt? Or oh, mate, I think that's two years you can look back on and get up on that microphone, big yeah, dog. baby. There you go. Yeah, so, <laughs> that's um, money. Two years wasted for me. Eh? Um, we could have gone all the way in both of those games and. Uh, just let the Cowboys back in right at the end. Yeah, and it just pinch the lollies. Yeah, the Cowboys just seem like it's a never say die team. But I, I must admit, when Oatsy crashed over, I thought that might have been it for the Bronx. It seemed to sort of sway them back a little bit. But oh, yeah. absolutely, um, I mean, we like, had, um, yeah, them leading the whole time, and then just fucking. You, you, there's always this feeling, especially playing the Cowboys, that it's like, I don't know if we got this. Yeah. You know, it's always you in can't the back of your mind. you can't have ten minutes to go and and be. Anywhere under six points against the Cowboys, they're gonna exactly. they're gonna play yeah. it right yeah. to the end, yeah. if They'll not further, like yeah. they have in the last four games. So uh, as yeah. grand final last year, they s- scored a try to tie it up after the bell. Yeah. Like there's ne- never say die. It seems with those sort of players. Hey Benny, yeah. I mean, and they play safety. They seem the Broncos again. Like well, not last night, but mm. it is never say die from the Cowboys. They got that attitude, and everyone has known this game's become one of the classics it's one of the best derbies in the NRL every single game Fucking ends up nice, like man. that yeah. extra time golden yeah. point the, la- the last three games before that leading up were decided by one point between those teams and we've needed to go to extra time again for this one yeah. I personally uh, Jason Taumalolo the other JT in the Cowboys one of the three of them He'd been under, he'd got in a bit of shit for like a willful damage charge for going in egg and cars or something up in town for like two weeks ago. Him and a bunch of these other under 20s boys from up there. Just young boys being fucking stupid, bored fucking midweek. Right. Like, if you listen to a, oh one yeah. of our underground episodes, we went into deep detail about the shit we used to hurl at yeah, cars absolutely. and houses. <laughs> yeah, when we were definitely, kids. mate. No, I've been there. I, I'm not mad at these guys because I admitted live on air that I was pegging stubbies at the train from uh, in, a, in, a, in a backyard. So I, I understand where these kids are at. I'm not mad at them. Allegedly. Yeah, yeah. Allegedly. <laughs> You couldn't prove it all these years somebody, later. Somebody so. comes out from 1993 <laughs> to fucking put a lawsuit on. Gold case <laughs> solved. I was on. I was on that fucking train. I'm like, oh, hang on. Yeah. yeah it wasn't. Oh. Um, it wasn't us um, throwing eggs at Racecourse Road years ago. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. It, see, e- everyone's done it. We'd all have stories of doing that. It's just a young couple of young kids, but. Tamalolo was a bit the only first grader that was there doing it. So he'd been in a bit of the shit and he'd come out the week after that where he'd been hounded in the media against Melbourne in the first semi final and had his most quiet game of the season. Comes out against the Broncos, goes home. He had a fucking blinder on uh, Didn't he on come Friday out night. Hard. Those those carries that he had in the middle of the field, sort of that middle third that they talk about, he just helped fucking dominate that on any it was Sam Burgess like where he was on that grand final run where he carried him. He got Tamalolo. 100 meters after contact. 100 meters after contact he gained. Yeah, I heard he um he ran 300 total meters, eight, better than three forwards in the Brisbane side. <laughs> wow. Just smashing it, yeah. Right. Just and and what fucking 22, 23 years old right. as well. You'd the be int- locking up to him on a lifetime contract if you're oh, talking oh. one club man. <laughs> I could sign him up. The intensity in his, his his runs, it was just like scary. And you'd see him just break the gaps and he they constantly do that. The the Cowboys style of playing like they will rush up in their defense the first three players and then they kind of drop back for the, fir- the last few. And that's what kind of let Broncos get into that game like straight up because they were let getting run over. But then in the end, you just see Tamalolo and all their forwards step up and mm. they would bust through and then uh, disallow the quick play the balls for the Broncos. And then they they just got back into so it. They had a sniff. They're a fucking like big side too, the Cowboys. Like you can't underestimate that. You got Tamalolo, James Tarmow. They've got that Cohen Hess. He's in he's in the side now. He's only 20 years old. Best part, 112, 113. Just big bodies, one after another, coming up. Benny Hannett, Matt Scott, all these fellas, just huge. Yep. But the qu- the main question for me now, moving forward, the Cowboys progress to a Friday night game against Cronulla. How do those guys back up on seven days rest and get themselves up for another game? That that's was a fucking torture. After that sort of game too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. and that's following a big game in Melbourne the week before. That's right. Yeah, Look, true. I, d- I did hear though that the Cowboys took the same path last year too. They lost round one of the finals last year and had to go the hard way to get it done. So apparently they but had this week off too. Training. Uh, Paul Green goes rest, boys. We yeah. know what we're doing. It's really? back end of that, the season. Let's true. just focus. Yeah. Well, it was. It was Recover almost a shame. The body and shit. Yeah. yeah. Like at this point. At this point of the season, every player on that field would be carrying shit. There'd be niggles, mm. niggles by this point. Like we talk about in UFC, no one makes it to the cage healthy. These blokes here would be banged up now, but just have oh, their eyes like on the prize. Believe. Like JT talking about getting a couple of shots in his ass on Did he? the other night. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. He right. came out on the news. Yeah. Jeez. Was that during the game? 
Yeah, yeah. Because yeah. I saw him go down. I thought he was he was gone for a while there, yeah, but then oh, he, yeah. they yeah, must, they must just fucking like, they yeah, must yeah. just jab him up, eh? Get him back out there, feel no pain. Apparently, Fabrizio Vadum had a had a shot in his foot just before he fought, like he had a broken foot. So he did that really? front kick. Yeah, the and, then, zone. and then led with that fucking flying side kick. Yeah, crazy. <laughs> Third time he's done that. You street know? fight yeah, issue, yeah. wasn't it? Like so, backing up for this week for the Cowboys. Cronulla coming off a week off, but in this corresponding game last year, the Cowboys beat him 39-0 up in Townsville. I know this one is in Sydney, mm. but there'd be some mental scars for some of those Cronulla players. It's a similar roster that's backing up. Hey, who, who, which way are you leaning, Dave? Oh, mate, I um, I can't stand Cronulla, so... <laughs> 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 I seri- oh, seriously, yeah. it's just a team full of thugs, really. Yeah. Like, yeah. you got Fafita yeah. and Gallon and Ennis. Yeah. They're just... Mongrels Wade, Gra- <laughs> Wade Graham's got some mongrel oh, in him yeah. too He plays hard But yeah I mean Shout out to our New South Wales fans Yeah 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 Bloody <laughs> Spoken like da- a true Dave's a passionate stand. Queenslander no, I've got I mean I've got one foot in the Sharks camp of, I, I know Jason Bakulia through, through my mate from school So I've You know I've got a soft spot there But sure. the rest of the team Yeah, yeah it's, I, I understand that too A lot of people um, you're not alone there either. I know a lot of people that aren't fans of the Sharkies. First, they had the steroid scandal go through with the peptide, so people were calling them drug cheats. And then Andrew Fafita has been hauled over the coals with some of his behaviour recently. And then, as you say, you got Ennis, who's known as the <laughs> biggest niggler in the NRL. A lot of casual fans at home going, oh, fuck these guys, go the Cowboys. The Bulldogs have got that rep a little bit as well, don't yeah. they? Mm. Yeah. Most most definitely do. There's a lot of couple of teams out there that are known as sort of real like grub sides, but mm. Sharky, Sharkies would be right up there. But it's an interesting like uh, tactic to take though, man, because that sort of grinding, it's like it's like uh, fighting somebody who's, you know, fucking keeping you up against the cage and dirty boxing you the whole time. It's like, that's a factor. And if you can get a team together to not unnecessarily niggle, like I don't rate all the um, the rubbing rubbing it, rubbing it in shit when like somebody makes a mistake mm-hmm. and stuff like that these days. But um, if it's just fucking play on like a you know rubbing heads into the ground like on tackles and stuff like that, frustrating the attack. Do I don't know. Do you see anything where um, the Cowboys had put a formal? Was it Cowboys who put a formal complaint against Melbourne? How uh, yeah. the way they've been tackling, like really? two of them got spinal injuries from being mm. crushed and things uh, like that. Crusher so like tackles, or yeah. So they attacked the Melbourne. Have also been another team known for their kind of wrestling and bad kind well, of. Yeah, well, they've always led the way in that sort of fucking those allegations. Eh? They really have at the Storm. They've got like the crusher tackle for people to have no idea what we're talking about. Sort of a two men in a tackle tackling a rugby league player running with the ball front on. One sort of goes high, the other one wrestles around the ball and they look to take him down and it sort of crushes, makes their spine, makes their chin basically touch their sternum and bend their spine back the other way. Yeah, like the top like, person yeah. sort of pushes pushes right. down on their shoulders to sort of crunch mm. their body down. And it seems to be happening more and more. And a guy from the Cowboys is out now who's one of their best players, Ethan Lowe. He's definitely, he's definitely underrated, an 80-minute sort of back rower too. So. I back him for first try scorers. He's always deadly on that edge after Thurston's oh, balls. Him, or him and Gavin Cooper, Cooper just money for jam mm. for... If you backed them every week, you'd get at more than least not. four or five a season. Remember that um, Fox Sports uh, fantasy we used to play? Oh, the yeah. F- the old format. Yep. I used to get first try scorers off my players all the time. Yeah. And it was either centers or second rows. It was brilliant. It. It's <laughs> fucking just running, <laughs> running off halves, man. Yeah. Absolutely. I know um, a lot of people are cashing in on players these days for first try scorers and Joey Leilua has been a real popular one this year we'll touch on the Canberra side Bevan of the draw Bevan French another one e- Eels he's fucking electric that kid he could be anything he's from Innisfil my, he went to high really? school with my friends and he they just got the call up and then his first game or first two games he had five tries next to him and then he ended up getting a try pretty much every game he's like just with the speed he's got a yeah, country boy just can't well, tackle for shit though <laughs> 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 yeah that, that'll come yeah. that'll come but did you yeah. see um, what did you think of that young bloke Kalen Ponga on the wing for the Cowboys on the weekend. Uh, electric. Did mate. his job. Yeah. Mate, for, to debut in a game with that much intensity and that much on the line. The derby. It didn't overawe him in the slightest, that kid. It really didn't, eh? He was his uh, product of uh, Anglican Church Grammar. Stewie, he went to the... Uh, he went there and played fullback. And there's a highlight reel on YouTube of him. If anyone's looking for something to Google and you're a footy fan, type in Callan Ponga uh, first 15 highlights and... This kid at a school level playing in an elite level school rugby comp is fucking untouchable, man. He's got like a five minute thing throwing really? back to his school days. And he's only a year older now. And from his debut at the weekend, 
they'll wrap him up in cotton wool, and he's getting a game again this weekend. Yeah. So, yeah. oh really? I thought mm. uh, Lint's back, isn't he? Yeah, Lynette's back. back. Uh, Winterstein's out yeah, again, yeah. so Still Ponga, will, Ponga will stay there. So he'll get another turn. But you can bet your bottom dollar, even though he went well, the Sharkies will look to exploit him again. I don't want, wonder what side he's on. Has he got Valentine Holmes? Yeah, is he marking him? I'm not really sure, man. I'm yeah. pretty sure. Yeah. They caused damage. They're round 14 the last time they played. Mm. Ended up in one of those weird score lines. I think it's 13-10. And I remember Cowboys went out to a head, like, I think like 8-0 to start off with, and they looked like they had it comfortably. Yeah. And then the bloody Sharks just fought their way back in. Ended up Maloney getting a few penalty goals and yeah. a drop kick. And it was brutal because it was a bit back and forward. But yeah, So it they got that over them already at Toyota Park, so... Either way, like this, we're going to Allianz for oh, this one too, with the biggest, record, biggest, yeah. biggest stadium too. So, Cowboys have had some good nights there, and they've had some fucking bad ones as well. If you remember when they got knocked out by Manly with the the hand of foreign scandal, where he'd gone up to compete for a ball and like he'd well, knocked didn't the, they he'd get knocked, knocked the ball out by the Sharks once for like a seventh tackle. It was try. Yeah, they got was fucked that over. Bo Ryan back to back years. Uh, Might have been. been. Yeah, why well, they deserve Bo this knows. Run, eh? They deserve it because they got fucked. Like a yeah. couple of years in a row. They yeah, did, all the man. conspiracy theories that are going around, yeah. Yeah, they were from Queensland. They fucking uh. don't like the Queenslanders <laughs> in there. Fucking <laughs> refs again. Right. You can bet you're right. Like, speaking, speaking of teams uh, like playing each other, it looks like on just code swapping here briefly, the Aussie Rules could end up being a Sydney versus Greater Western Sydney Aussie Rules grand final in Melbourne. Hawthorne which would, out. Which nice. would just... Fuck like, them over, wouldn't it? Like, like the NRL last year. Yeah. Even you know, two Queensland e- teams. Exactly right. It's funny when that happens too, where I'd be an advocate of Platt at Suncorp. Like, why wouldn't like they? That. Apparently there is renovations for the stadium coming up at Homebush, so that might take them about two or three years to do. So there is talk of having to relocate grand finals. So mm. Well, Sharks it's is a the no only team, some. isn't it, in there? Yeah, it is now. Top four, yeah. It is now. So if we, you're, are you going on record? Who have who you got for the uh, Cowboys Sharks? I think it's going to be a close one, and I'm going to go Cowboys by one, and maybe Ooh. in extra time. Dan? I'm back in the cows. I reckon uh, JT is just grace under pressure, always at the back end of the game, and I think that's you know, where these finals games tend to go because it's two sides that are so fucking close that like there's never anything in it, mm. and you, you, add that, you add that JT factor in the last 15 minutes, that and that, that makes the difference for me. Mm. Yeah. Best player in the league. I'll I'll just I'll go against the grain. I'll I'll go the Sharks. I think coming off a week's rest for them in Sydney, the Cows having to get up ag- again after that brutal encounter. I think, yeah, I'll go I'll go Sharks by four. Yeah, I might I might do the same, bro. See, I'm gonna go Sharkies by two. Yep. Um, you're gonna see a totally different game this week than you saw on Friday night. Oh, but it w- it will be a different game of footy. You're dead right. Absolutely. It would be. It wouldn't surprise me if it. It was 10 6 yeah. at full time. It could be yeah. get into that grind with the Sharkies the way that they like to play. But yeah, unbelievable I'll, I'll, I'll take amount the of points scored in that game for a fucking preliminary final. Eh? The, the really Bronx was. Game. I'm just backing on the the Sharks always choking as they do. Mm. They're going oh, mate, there's, there's that factor. <laughs> I think the Michael Ennis factor might be a bit for the Cronulla as well. But him and Gallon, both, not, none of them getting younger. Luke mm. Lewis as well. Lift for those guys. Yep. That club's never won a premiership. So no, I, love, I, I love that stat. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Let's keep it, boys. <laughs> it, could, uh, uh, it could well and truly stay that way, pal. That's the thing. Uh, Is it yeah. like their 50th year as a club this year or something like that? Yeah, probably. Yeah, that's what I heard something yeah, really. this week. I was pretty surprised when I read that they never yeah. won a premiership. Yeah, no, it's fucking dreadful. I think they've been there. I I was at a Super League Grand Final as a uh, as a youngster, and watched the Broncos win the Super League Grand Final against Cronulla. So it was, yeah. Well, this Su- is Super League. Canberra's third or fourth crack at a. Uh, Canberra have won back to back. Canberra, the last team to go back to back. Is that that is that no, right? No, it was Brisbane ninety two ninety three. Brisbane, Brisbane yeah. yeah. Canberra before that. Right. Was that with Super League? Was that with Big Dell? That was no, big, he, big, big Dell was uh, 2000. Yeah. And 97 as well, I think. Yeah, yeah, Wimber yeah, would have been 97, 98, but they didn't count one because Super League. Yeah. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, that that's interesting. Eh? Like the fucking code war, but I I count it, mate. It's yeah. Premiership's a premiership. Fucking oath, yeah. mate. <laughs> <laughs> we won. And a lot of, like that's the thing. A lot of those Melbourne Storm guys, like oh, they, we stripped their premiership. They still went out and won the grand final, and they got on the piss like they did afterwards. And no one's taken anything away from those guys. It's Fuck like no. the only thing that has gone from is the history book. Like all oh, us, those blokes. Yeah, we won the premiership that year. Yeah, I still think though with the salary cap scandal, that definitely. Like, if it's not an equal playing field and one team's breached that and they've got way more talent than another team, it's a hollow victory for mine. I don't know. That goes back to um, that peptides, etc. 
That coach was the Cronulla Sharks. He should be banned for life in my book. Flanagan. Like, oh, how is he still there? I know. And he's back 12 months later. Whether he knew or not, it happened on his watch. So if you have to be part of collateral damage for that, then so be it. Yeah. It's it's unfortunate, but I yeah, I don't I just don't know how he is back coaching either, mate. I I don't know if there's more to it, but when you look at a kid like Shandor Earl who got fucking hung out to dry for it, and you got this bloke who's feeding it to all his staff allegedly, fuck man, yeah, that's just a no brainer for me. But mm. that's that's one for another podcast. We could go deep on that, but <laughs> on the other side of the draw, Stewie, we got uh, Storm. Storm Raiders. The, the Raiders are still here. They're yep. still here. Yeah, they've been fucking the form team all season, man. Consistent. And uh and they were unlucky to um to miss out just before the uh just before the finals to get to get the storm like arguably the two top teams sort of um playing off, knocking each other out. But I think um I fucking I really love that Cameron Munster, eh? And he's he's yeah. gonna be a great Queensland prospect, I reckon. I reckon the storm will get it done. Yeah, that's what I'm going with. Yeah, they're too too professional. They've got that experience in the finals. Canberra, look look at how good they've done this year. They've got some awesome players like uh, on the wings and Crocker. Out, oh, what's his name? Uh, Papali, um, and Ricky Stewart, great tactician. He he knows how to rev the boys up. And look how he, the results have shown. I think Melbourne might just be a bit too good for them down there. They they kind of make Amy is Amy Park there yeah. kind of. Uh, hard to win there. Is it, is it at Amy Park or have they moved them to Sydney? I think it is Amy Park. Okay, I think there, they yeah. get the home final there. Yeah. Right. For finishing minor premiers and stuff. But yeah. Canberra, if it ends up being fucking Melbourne and uh, Townsville yeah. playing off in Sydney. <laughs> it would just be, just be the hangover of last year. Like Sydney fans like, not again. Yeah. <laughs> New South Wales Rugby League would be spewing if, yeah. that, if that's the case. But um, <laughs> Watch the refing the decisions now for this yeah. game against the Cowboys. Yeah. Oh, no. <laughs> just get caned in the penalty count. They're just not even in it. Like, oh, it was a big penalty count round 14 this year for them. It was nuts. Like, I think 11 in the first 20 minutes. It's Jesus crazy, Christ. I remember it. Yeah. Put it in your fucking pocket, mate. Mm. Oh, check that stat. Put, put the whistle <laughs> Put the whistle away. That's like Bill Harrigan back in the day for against Queensland. Against Jesus. Big, <laughs> against Big Gordy. Yeah. Just, that hair, <laughs> just go. You're a fucking cheat. <laughs> yeah, just go, mate. You're off. Like. Is that what he said to him? Gordy, Gordy did, yeah. Oh, yeah. true. Called him a fucking cheat. He's like, mate, you're sent off. Like, don't I love Gordy, eh? Because Bill Harrigan, plenty of ego like there for him too. He's not going to cop that. But on the uh, like, back to the game, I think... Melbourne probably will be too strong. I think Canberra have exceeded expectation from the start of the year. I don't think many people would have had them finish in second after 26 rounds. Absolutely I, I just not. kept waiting for them to stumble and they didn't. But uh, they're sort of the, we're talking about players who are not getting their 100%. Like Hodgson's not. He'd have to back up again. It was lucky that he got there, I think. It'd mm -hmm. be credit to the medical staff that he did. But I don't know if he backs up. He's such an integral part of their team. Hodgson, he'll he'll play again, but whether he's hundred percent, Austin the same with his hand. He's in the halves, but you just never know with Canberra if they get on a roll. There's points in bunches for them. So and they have beaten Melbourne in the last in the last round, I think, all of round twenty five, twenty six. But they played mm -hmm. twice this year, I think, and um and they've each won one. The game down in Canberra was a Monday night game, in I think round twenty five, and Canberra out muscled them. They frustrated the Storm, and I think if you can do that to Melbourne, if you don't really play on under their tempo then you can sort of upset them. But if you're playing against a team, as you say, with Munster, Smith, Cronk, Bromwich, yeah. it's going to be a tough night. They'll, they'll just Chambers. play for Chambers. Canberra errors and just grind them down, grind mm. them down. But, hey, on the day, Canberra can Definitely. turn up and belt them. You know, Leigh Parna. If Leigh Parna fire, who oh. knows? Man. They've, oh, got they the, freaks. they've just been so potent down that edge. Like Joseph Leilua, for mine, should go on the Kangaroo Tour. Oh, I yeah. think he's earned his spot for the end of the year. He's just been... He came through the Roosters as a young kid, went up to Newcastle. It didn't work out for him there, but I think Ricky Stewart, fucking hats off to him, seems to be getting the best out of him, and he's gone to another level under mm. under his watch. And Ray, and Jordan Rapana, old Palm Beach Corumban boy, playing outside him, has got himself onto the radar as a fucking legit NRL staple now as well. I mean, he was sort of in and out of the team there for years, playing at South Logan, trying to get a crack, and now... He scored fucking 15 tries or something this year as well. So, yeah. just going great guns for him. But Yeah, two highlight reels for days between the two of them. That, that flick pass, it's like got to be one of the best tries this year. Eh? It's it up is. There. Oh, for sure. Up there with JT's from last week almost oh, has to become one of the tries of the year as well just for that fucking big sort of moment. That pass, but eh? 
Oh, you just ran at the fattest bloke on the field, mate. Sammy, uh, big Sammy T, yeah, <laughs> big same hero, same villain. Fell over uh, under fatigue. It wasn't. It was just sort of fatigue too for Sammy. Just so tired, just trying, Jeez, trying had, to lift. He his had leg. a fucking blinder up until oh. like you know the death. Though we had he so did. many opportunities that game. Milford, did you um? Jill. Did you see um Friday's interview after the game on Fox Sports? No, no. He was actually holding back tears from that. Really? That loss, yeah. I think I've um, seen him like. Right, because yeah. he is always the character too, but he'd 100% have the serious side to him. But it's good to, it would have meant a lot for those boys to win for Corey Parker. Yeah, I, I was going to well. say, the CP factor would have yeah. been, you know, you could fucking see the disappointment etched on his face, man. Like, you yeah. know, to be so close as well, like, put it, you, you honestly couldn't fault him for their fucking effort and their performance, man. That's right. Do you reckon... Um, Wayne went home to the sugar mama, or, or <laughs> 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 Mate, where did he? Where fucking did he meet her? Newcastle, Wayne apparently, Wayne allegedly. Castle. But yeah. like, fuck. Well, why is this a story? Leave I him know. alone. Exactly. Oh, guy, hey. This is private exactly. life. That, that was his. Um, he said he was coaching England, but he was flying back to Newcastle to, to see her. Yeah. Yeah. Newcastle, yeah. Newcastle, England. Yeah. Yeah. Dragged her with him allegedly, but I'm not. Uh, I'm not mad at the guy for it. I mean, people are uh, taking pot shots at him online, and oh, he had an affair and all of this type of stuff. Wayne Bennett is a saint. He's he, a he's fucking human of the fucking yeah. century, like, dude. You're talking to a guy who went on Australian Story. He was intensely private man leading up to it. Goes on Australian Story and people are like, fucking Bennett, he gives nothing to the media, blah, blah, blah. Goes on here and people are like, this guy's one of the best humans out there. Mm. And you're talking about any player that plays under him, just they th- just all speak about the care factor that he has for him. He's raised two... Heavily disabled children. He set them up for life through his working career. If this guy's been in a 40-year marriage and he chooses to go another way, fucking play on. Yeah. So be it. He's set yeah. everyone up for life and 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 good on him for that. And, and he's for 50 years old, she doesn't seem like a bad sort either. And, so. and, and he's 66, <laughs> man. Up, yeah. Like, you know, the, the average male lives to what? Like 75, 80 if you're lucky. Mm. Like, fucking let him let him go try a different flavor of ice cream for the last fucking <laughs> decade you know what i mean like uh, it's just like yeah, chip it's ridiculous so they should just let him live and yeah. why they got to put it on the front page that's it, after like, they've lost yeah. like oh, kick that's a man when he's down yeah yeah, I mean, <laughs> yeah like, I don't people know. just like, lining I mean, up for a shot at bennett <laughs> yeah yeah and i mean we're talking about it but yeah i'm just like you know fucking uh, going to bat for the bloke really like, that's right it is it's a current it, it is a current event in rugby league at the minute so i, th- I thought i'd fucking th- throw it out there but I'm not mad at the guy for it, and hey, if he's if he's happy, then I'm happy. It was desperate for me to come over from Gold Coast. It seemed they paid some pretty decent coin for him. I think they've got him too. He was a fucking finisher, man. He's uh, what do you like, David Mead? Yeah, I think he's he all right. He's a speedster. I think rather, he'll be him, all right. rather him than fucking Maranta, mate. But I think I don't know. Brisbane seem to have so many backs now. Mm. I think we need to start stocking the front row. You know, mm. yeah, good call there. No, a bit old, you know. No Parker, no Jared Wallace. Yeah. Mm. He finished the season strong, Jared Wallace. Yeah, he's season. Gold Coast bound. He's yeah. going home. But what, um, what do you about think about Tavita Pongai Junior. and only coming on in extra time or something like? Or was it? Did he really? The second yeah. half of extra time is when he came on. Yeah, I heard, Shit. I, he he didn't get subbed the whole time. I think um, Andrew Voss had a go at Bennett in the in the paper during the week about that call. Said that was a monumental fail. Yeah. Leaving him on the bench that long. Right. Imagine Definitely. if he came on, got the try, yeah. then he'd be all Come on, come on, <laughs> for s- come on for Sammy for 15 minutes. Maybe Sammy makes that tackle oh, at the oh end. Oh, if he was there. Oh, yeah. <laughs> that, that's all <laughs> hypotheticals, isn't it, really? Yeah. Like, it's hard to fucking draw a line in the sand with that. Yeah. If your auntie had nuts, she'd be your uncle, as my dad would say. <laughs> <laughs> Big hairy bag on your auntie. Like. <laughs> <laughs> Who you boys got for actually taking it out and the whole thing? Oh, it's a tough call, man, eh? It's just like, you know, it could go one of four ways too <laughs> too easily. It's like, four of us. Yeah. yeah. You can make a case for each one of them at this point. You really can. I've, if someone gives me 10 grand now and says, go put some money on for us, I, mm. I, I've got to put it on Melbourne. I, I really do. They've had, they've had the week off to freshen up. They've got Canberra at home this week and they can put them away, backing up. Yeah, I, I really, really and truly think that they can get it done. So I'll go on record. And Regardless, I'm not the guy to ask. I've had an absolute shocking season on the tips. Yeah, <laughs> me too. Just haven't been able to pick it. It just seems like every time, you know, I, I think it's a sure thing, it's not. And then when I try to take a gamble, it doesn't pay off. It's yeah. just fucking it's, uh, the it's nature that's of the beast. the NRL versus yeah. like AFL, it's AFL, true. you've got dollar ten favourites to go true. through and then NRL it's so, so yeah. even so well, well in like me personally the only probably game of AFL that I would watch all year would be the grand final and uh, 
last season was in a tipping competition where I had to do NRL and AFL. But the form guide was just enough for the for the AFL to get fucking perfect rounds every time almost. You, because you won it was that, just, didn't you? Yeah, I ended up taking it out, yeah. taking out the W. Two hundred and fifty bucks. Thank you very much. Not even a place this year. <laughs> <laughs> nah, I'm like I'm lucky to not get pants. I think I've got. I've like, I think I'm sixth out of he's ten. Come, he's come over to a proper competition. He's <laughs> schooled up. <laughs> I was one point oh off the money, man. No, nah, I had a way better season last season. I had like two perfect rounds and I'm, shit. I'm in, a, I'm in uh, fourth for mine now. I, tr- I Last weekend, sort of tried to tip... A, not, not so much I tried to tip upsets because I genuinely thought that the Panthers and Broncos were going to win. So I went, I went that way and came back to bite me in the ass. I've gone from third to fourth, so I'm out of the cash. But uh, up top, got um, Ginger Ninja and uh, me old mate Trev. Shout out, <laughs> shout out Trevi. Long time listener, Trevi. Shout out, mate. I hope you do get across the line. If it's not me, I hope it's you, mate. But uh, <laughs> he's tied up top as well. So I don't know which way he'll go this week. But I think I've done myself out of the cash by that. But I did land a little multi on the weekend that sort of covered the spread for that anyway. So fuck it. Is that uh, the ESPN format? Yes. Yeah. 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 So I... Um, Choosing the margin for the Friday night game. Yeah, that coming into that last round of the NRL, the, like the comp finishes there. I was um, second place and fifth in another. And I had a joker left and jagged a perfect round to, to win two comps. There I was we go. Wow. Yeah, it's great. Oh. <laughs> the 500 bucks, beautiful things. Fucking yeah. hell. Yeah. So do you... Um, you got five hundred for it. Yeah, man. Wow. So uh, only twenty six rounds. Yeah. Oh, perfect. Cut it off the finals. Yeah, you might as well. I, I don't rate playing the finals personally. It should be first past the post. But can I ride your bets for next year? Or yeah, bro. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Send them through. Email me your tips. Fucking next season. That's not bad at all. <laughs> I used to work with this bloke who um, was like, uh, fuck, I want to say like sixty, like late fifties, if not. But he um. Him and his mates were mad keen into horse racing and 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 betting on horses, and they would uh, collectively put in, I think, I think it was up to like two hundred k a year, and like through that they would fucking continually like put this into a bank of their winnings or whatever, and then every year they would go to the Melbourne Cup and have like a fucking ballers trip with like they all bring their wives and they just got a got their own private line to the fucking to the bookie or whatever it is. I'm not a gambler myself, so I don't know all the fucking terminology Mm. and shit like that. But just like hearing the amount of like money that these guys were putting, putting on the horses and obviously not fucking slouches when it came to knowing what was up with the horses as well. Like they, you know, but I guess in that fucking scene, it's like any, any body, any horse can get up on any particular day. Mm. Like, and totally fuck with everybody's, you know, what they thought was going to happen. There is definitely people who, like Dave and I, are gamblers, we're actually in a uh, a syndicate together. We're a bunch of group. We're of actually ma- in Gamblers Anonymous. Yeah, 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 yeah. Club. Can we change? Yeah, the gonna, yeah, <laughs> put, yeah, yeah. M- moving right along, man. I'm getting that itch. Like <laughs> pokies. I'm put, put, put the app away. Don't, don't. <laughs> Dave, call the sponsor, mate. Call him. <laughs> <laughs> One day at a time. Yeah. Fifty Do you remember, do you remember that time at Warner? I think we were both hung over to the shit. You, you were lying <laughs> in one room, I'm in the other, and I've, I've heard I had the racing channel on. And this rose thing come up, so I've, I've run out there and I've put a dollar each way on it. It come through, paid 130 to yeah. one. Yeah, <laughs> that? that's right. How I do remember that. Was that? At the, at oh, the, sh- at the Shore House. Yeah, at yeah. the Warner Shore. Yeah, this, is back in the, this is in the back da- in the days of Jersey Shore, and Dave was living at a house out in Warner in Brisbane, and uh, <laughs> so we're naturally calling it the Warner Shore when we're fucking <laughs> hanging out there drinking. But yeah. I do remember that actually. Yeah. But yeah, we, we are in a syndicate together, and we're a bunch of people deposit each week, but. I can see why people get hooked with that. It becomes a social thing as well. But we had some money to play with last year. What did we turn up with? Best part of like fourteen grand or yeah, something at the end of it. I think we had about thirteen, but um, we were able to buy. The th- I think there was twenty eight members. We all got a shirt with our names, the the emblem on it, etc. And then I think we took twelve grand of the races and had a fucking <laughs> blind. <Yeah. them> <laughs> let, it, let it ride. It was what? Fucking How many of you are? Uh, there was 28 last year and Jeez. you got 30 this year. So yeah. And all that just on the bar? Or? Uh, you get each each person. It was done really well. Like the people that organised it have fucking got it down to an art now. Like you, Each person rocks up on the day, you get an envelope with your drinking allowance for the day. So there's 30 bikes there issued with $150 in an envelope the second that they walk in and just get <laughs> slaughtered. <laughs> and uh, Blokes of all ages too, like from... Like I, I joined when I was fucking 19, 20 pretty much, sort of like back then. I've been in it for ages now, but... It's a fucking good social aspect too, but so you no. just put a punt on every week with the money that's in there or something. Yeah, yeah. So, so there's there's thirty of us. Uh, we put ten bucks in each a week. 
Um, I bank some of it, and then five of us bet thirty dollars each week. On and that rotates want. the five. And that just rotates. Anything. Yeah, anything. So so. 30, 30 bucks to bet. If you win more than ninety, you get to go again the yeah, next yeah. week. Oh, I so. won some money on the batch the other week, so shout out. Oh, yeah, <laughs> there you go. Imagine being like fucking Lorenzo for fucking Fatita Spec, where you were just like betting crazy <laughs> amounts of money or in like just crazy Vegas syndicates and that just ball of fucking betting and shit fuck that must be nerve wracking like eh? that movie Rat Race remember that with Whoopi Goldberg and Mr Bean no (laughs) can't say I've seen that one I don't think I'm going to follow that one up (laughs) casino owners doing the same shit making betting games it's bad true fuck but yeah for for Tito we'll just do that now Dan Bilzerian spec you know what I mean Mm. like fuck Enormous cash to just wage it phenomenal Mayweather sort of style. Apparently, um, apparently a lot of his wealth comes from inheritance though. Like apparently, it's it's sort of made out that he's this gun poker player and he's won all his money in poker, but a lot of it's inheritance. I don't yeah, know. Yeah, inheritance, and he's sort of got his own line online website now, sort of thing where yeah. that w- that would generate a lot of cash. But yeah. the venture capitalist too just throws it at projects. I think a yeah. bit of it would have come from daddy. <laughs> you fucking dead right. Yeah, yeah. but. Hey, I'd ride it all the way to the fucking bank too if, if I was <laughs> in defi- his shoes. It's definitely a bit of tall poppy, like yeah, sitting yeah, in yeah, a Jilly sure. Street. He's, he just like, came yeah, yeah, Got it all like, given yeah, to him. Fuck yeah, that man, guy. <laughs> probably not even grateful for it. You can't. Like, <laughs> <laughs> he's having a shit time. Like. <laughs> oh, good lord, <laughs> but, uh, mate. Yeah. That all about that insty fame. Yeah, yeah, but that shit's crazy, man. Just like those, uh, the the sponsored. Like models and shit that go on there. You see those memes. They're like, like here's the like the guy that they don't show in the photos and stuff like that. Like yeah. some of these banging hot chicks just getting paid by ugly fucking fifty eight year old Saudi princes just fucking to basically be like eye candy for them. Yeah, crazy wealth, man. To crazy do wealth. All sorts of unforgiving shit to them. Mm. Right. I've heard that like some of those Saudi royalty and shit have been known to get you know, Beyonce status celebrities to fucking come to their mansions and party and, and like... Everybody allegedly, got their number. Allegedly fuck them and shit. Everybody's really? got a number. Yeah. Everybody's got a price. The price Everybody's is right, man. You, you, see you pay fucking Beyonce a billion dollars for, you know, a four-hour trip to Jay-Z Saudi Arabia. Jay-Z sucking that dick too. <laughs> 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 allegedly. Jay-Z, I, I tongue the balls, man. We just yeah. started a diss track. Like. <laughs> for a billion dollars? Yeah. Oh, but... So, but that's the thing those the sort of wealth we're talking about over there these guys are driving around in gold plated cars just because they're fucking bored yeah <laughs> you know what I yeah. mean just and that's the stupid thing. I think cash. you would get to a point where like there's there's wealth to a, to a, a degree where it, it alleviates all of your stresses about fucking am I going to be alright am I going to be able to pay bills and all that sort of shit but I think you would get to a level where it just didn't mean anything anymore. I remember watching this like interview with Michael Jackson. I can't remember what it was, one of his docos or something like that, where he goes into this super fucking ritzy designer like furniture store and he's buying million dollar vases, like these fucking hideous looking vases that are about, you know, like half the size of a person sort of thing. And it's just like walking into a store and apparently like the the people that were sort of following behind him or whatever were saying that, you know, these will go into storage and he'll, after 20 minutes after he's just gone and bought these four or, f- four or five vases for like $10 million or whatever, he's forgotten about them. They'll go into a storage down in, in the garage and shit like that. And I think you get to a certain point where it would make you happy. Like it would, it would take away all those stresses, like I said, but fucking you'd get to a point where it'd just be like, this doesn't mean anything further from this point. Like once you were sitting at like, 20 million dollars like i don't know at, at what point does it become just like your blase to it like i think by the time you're buying an island and shit like that you just be so mm. that like fuck you money yeah, like yeah. just it open matter. so many doors if if you buy a powerball ticket tonight rosie and you jag 30 mil what do you do oh fuck you call in sick tomorrow oh calling in I'd still go in, in mate. Yeah. <laughs> no, I, no, I, I actually love my job, man. Be, no, <laughs> <laughs> oh, mate, I'd um, I'd miss him, mate. Oh, Just yeah, go part time, like. Yeah. <laughs> no, I don't know. I guess I'd be, get rid of all my debt and yep. have a big holiday. Eh? Yeah, yeah, definitely. Yeah. You, you got to look after the folks and yeah. But that's it. Like, what what would you actually do with your time? It's like, you know, you still have to do something with your time. It's not like money solves the problem of what do you do with your this experience that you call your life or whatever you know so and i think fuck it'd be kind of lonely man like if you were not saying fucking sitting around on your own island balling out wouldn't be like 
would would be te- a terrible thing. Mm. But what would be fucking ten times better is if you were there with a bunch of your mates and you had that camaraderie of like, yeah, we're all having a good time. Like mm. that's what it me that's what real wealth is you know like having that enjoyment it all comes down to that lifestyle design you know like it's more about what you're doing with your riches like if Mm, you can just live a life and everybody's having a good time with you yeah i I see the best thing you would do would be doing like 30 like three months of something you're interested in like Mm. i throw yourself in something for three months and okay i did that now let's try something different for three months Mm. and you just always evolve and try on everything different and you just got the money to back it exactly yeah i think not not some monty burns character Mm. just like shitting on everybody so that you can fucking sit on your piles and piles of money i think it would just (laughs) be so good if we if you could just go if you had that access to that type of like tens of millions of dollars through powerball or whatever where you could just say Guys, fuck it. We're going to go to a month of NFL games over in the States. We'll fucking get a corporate box for each one of them. We'll c- come for the ride. We've got enough Man. to take leave, take leave from work. We've got enough to cover your wages and shit for the whole time. It's no problem at all. Bro, come, my, come along we'll my, take a month off and we'll my go do auntie it is real sick man i just need um i just need 10 grand like if oh. you can just give me 10 grand man she really needs this operation <laughs> dog right, man just people start coming out yeah. of the woodwork yeah, 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 like yeah, yeah. that's yeah. fucking I'll, I'll pay you back man like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> my cousin went to st patrick's in yeah. 2005 like. <laughs> 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 but like you were saying benny like it just gives you so many options you know like if you do want to go and study something change your career yeah you, know, you got this buffer man you can do anything you want really you know? we should change money to call it freedom units because that's really <laughs> what it is <laughs> the more freedom units you have you know you can have a, a amount that you can just be free to do whatever you want forever Maybe. it is fucking true man you could pitch that to uh if we ever go north Queensland, make freedom south queensland. units make freedom units <laughs> 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 coming at you jay-z <laughs> oh man <laughs> I mean, can I borrow a couple of freedom units? Yeah, <laughs> yeah it's it's du- it's a done deal. I'm yeah. I'm completely changing what I would refer to as dollars or money. Mate, you or could anything. probably talk people out of wasting money doing that because you call it money. Hey, mate. Uh, oh damn it! I just lost fucking five hundred freedom units on that horse. Like, <laughs> yeah, man. it's a potential. You feel like your freedom's fucked. Like, oh man, I just took away from my freedom rather than just handing over some money. That's yeah. some deep yeah, shit. So yeah. like five hundred freedom so, units yeah. at the strip club last night, dog. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> totally worth Got it. Got me again. <laughs> some mind fucking going on. Oh, <laughs> that's that's fucking very interesting, right? We should pitch that. I like that. Yeah, yeah. that should be. Um, that should be the title of this episode. Yeah. I'm episode not claiming I made that up. I'm probably heard it somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> Finals fever and freedom units podcast. <laughs> Definition of freedom units. Boom. Look, we're fucking approaching seven. I don't know about you boys, but I am hyped the fuck up for episode one of the Bachelorette. I'll go. I'll go on. Rec- I'll go on record and say it. I don't even care. Yeah. I watched every episode of that last season. Richie, Richie found love. It seemed. Oh, what do you think? Wait, 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 decision? wait, wait. We need to we need to differentiate because this is the Bachelorette. That's right. Which the last season was the Bachelor, and let's face it, the Bachelorette doesn't quite have the same charms that no. the the guys are all mates. The, yeah. does. Right. the guys end up bonding together and high five each other after dates and shit like that. But they're usually one rogue guy who just fucking. They'll throw some plants in there yeah. for sure. There's a couple of actors in there and that. But I just love the early episodes of The Bachelor where the chicks just show their true colours. <laughs> <man. laughs> they just come to what? fucking scratch what? each other's man, eyes out. What? <laughs> He's taking her to the fucking backyard. Like they're just all over it. It's just cr- cr- I like the cringe factor. I, I've always enjoyed watching television Crap. programs like Borat and things like that, where I'm sitting in my chair feeling uncomfortable. Yeah. Like I, li- I like that uh, in my programming. Yeah. For some reason, I yeah, I find it like highly comedic, and I think there's there's two types of audience like mm. that that when they watch those trash TVs that find that so uncomfortable that they can't deal with it and it's too frustrating and there's other people that just find that hilarious they're just they're laughing i at know it. which school i'm in but yeah. love it where are you yeah. where are you and dave are you on the fence or you you don't mind a bit of bachelor no nah, mate i tuned out this season <laughs> yeah, I, yeah, yeah. I, I, I think i watched part of the first episode and yeah. richie was a fucking robot <laughs> <laughs> he's like pr 101 guy eh? mate well i'd ha- hate to break it to you but after episode 16 he was the same so yeah, yeah, you, you, yeah. you didn't miss a whole lot he didn't uh didn't hold a candle to sam wood in my books See, shout out to all the season one batch fans but uh <laughs> how do you reckon you'd go though like in in the in the situation of you're on this show and you're one of, say, fucking 12, 13, 14 blokes and you're standing in that auditorium 
spec thing where the chick's down there with a table full of roses and, and she's like, she's only got fucking 13 and there's 15 of you or whatever. Mm. How do you reckon you go like being in the in the bottom three or whatever? Just getting brushed straight off the bat. <laughs> the, it'd be the worst getting, I'd rather get brushed in the second last episode than the first episode because there's just nothing there. Yeah. It's like, ah, oh, well, sort of got hung out to dry in that show that did chicken yeah, soup. And, and the crazy thing is if you get to that stage, if you get to the end of the season you've really had to sell it. Like, you've had to be on national TV, going on record, say, I think I'm in love with this girl. Like, looking down the yeah. fucking barrel of the camera and shit. Like, oh, well, man. Ready? And yeah. cut. And uh, straight from the top again. What about <laughs> there would be multiple takes for that shit because oh, people would yeah. fuck up all well, the time. Well, that's why they look so wooden and strange, yeah. It'd, it'd be so, did, so tricky. You hear the uh, American one? They had the, the guy who won the season. <laughs> but, like, the guy who won it, it was two guys left. The guy, the one and lost, one won. But then they brought the guy who lost back onto an all-star season and then he was got tight with this girl and they're about to make love. And then in the last few <laughs> rounds, they, make enter love. That <laughs> they enter the guy who won the first season in because they had broken up the marriage. And then he comes in and just swoops and takes the bird again. From he came as an intruder. Twi- yeah, and oh takes it twice. So like, yeah. It was brutal. <laughs> I thought you were going to say they both gave her a flogging for a second. <laughs> 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 but honestly, like uh, watching the watching the end of that last one, it's legit. Like on The Simpsons, where um, <laughs> Bart's like replaying Ralph Wiggum getting his heart broken by Lisa in the fucking. <laughs> <laughs> it's like watch this. You can actually pinpoint the second his heart rips in half, <laughs> and it's like for that chick who comes runner up, and she fucking has to stand there, and you could just tell through like a, a distribution of energy in the way that he was sort of like. You could see that he'd started to go a little bit red in the face when he was having, because he he does like the shit shit sandwich sort of style of telling her, like mm, gives yeah. her gives her all this good stuff up front, and you know we've had this really good time, Let's and then you can easy, tell in his yeah. mind where he's having to to switch into okay now I've got to now I've got to yeah. tell her the truth. But yeah, look, yeah. you're really fantastic and yeah. amazing. But and then you can just see in her eyes she's, she's gone from really holding him just so full of just hope knowing. and fucking like uh, there's yeah. a future here it is to like just like to to basically Nikki. like go, like you can see that she's just completely numb inside and she's just gone into shock mode and all the colors dr- draining from her face and shit. Meanwhile, there's like millions of people sitting at home like yeah, like it all like, oh my god, <laughs> like you know it's just well, such it, a crazy thing that exists in society. One point yeah. one point one point two two million. The finale. True. Kidding. Oh, that's a lot of... In terms of the Australian it's population, that's you one, put, one tenth of the... Oh, no, yeah. not one tenth. You put that in a stadium, man. That's that's a lot of people to a game. Yeah. Put it that way. Mil- million man march oh, style. Like they're all at home watching The Bachelor, but... What's the world's biggest stadium? Oh, you'd have to look that up. That'd be... I know Rolling somewhere Stones had in, uh, like a mill, but they were on the beach. There's somewhere in the US that recently had 115... 15, 115 college game. Yeah, it college was game in had Texas, I think, wasn't it? That no. wouldn't surprise me, yeah. That said, maybe I can In excess of like 120,000 fans at a game. Jeez. Like, Dave, you went down to State of Origin 1 last year in, at the MCG. Yeah. That, no, is that the most you've seen in a, in a stadium? Yeah, it was, um, it was game two. Game um, two. Flew down there and, mate, yeah, I walked out. I think I went up to level four, walked out, and I was just blown away. MCG is massive. I think, yeah, 70 plus thousand at the at an Origin game. So wow. it was unbelievable, man. Yeah, it was great. The, um, it'd be all right getting on the source there at a Boxing Day test. Hey? Oh. You can sort of visualise that when you're there. Yeah, me, uh, remember Poppet we met in uh, Thailand? He's, yeah. he's, he's always asking me to go down there for a uh, Boxing Day Mate, it'd be one of the great sport days on the Australian sporting calendar if you're a fan. It's some bucket list shit where game of cricket, Australia will host an international country and it's the day after Christmas Day and they'll get 100,000 people there for it. Oh. And everyone will be nursing Christmas Day hanging 100,000 and they pack that thing out. Yeah, they'll, they'll get that to a ga- game of cricket on the first day. And can you imagine everyone nursing Christmas Day hangovers <laughs> just topping up for the next one? It'd be a fucking loose Shout out Australians too. Like. Mate, so the... Um, the the top 10 world's biggest stadiums 10 to 2 are all around 100,000 number 10 is the MCG with a with 100,000 or 24 we make the list um goes up through a few you wouldn't really have heard of um number 2 Michigan Stadium in Ann Arbor Michi- Michigan Michigan hun- State 107,600 Tom Brady's house 
But uh, Rungrado May Day Stadium in Pyongyang, North Korea is 150,000. Shout out Kim Jong. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Kim Jong. Yeah, <laughs> just waiting for fucking Rodman to come back. And their successful uh, nuclear testing this week. He's no. a um, he's a huge Chicago Chicago Bulls fan. That yeah. dude. Bas- oh, weird is basketball that? Yeah. tragic. Yeah. There's yeah, a there's a vice where they send over Dennis Rodman and he, and it, they basically treat him oh, like royalty right. and shit. It's yeah. weird. Hey? Yeah, <laughs> they but put on this big event for him and he's literally sitting next to the the dictator of North Korea, just <laughs> Anyone, like with no. all these piercings and crazy fucking <laughs> tattoos and hair and shit. Like, thank you. Just <laughs> off a bender and shit. <laughs> I tell you what, man, if, if I could choose a list of five podcast guests that we could get, I reckon Rodman would be in the top five. <laughs> Dennis Rodman and Tommy Lee together. You'd oh. want you'd want a bottle of Jack in about yeah. six hours. Yeah, definitely. But ch- strap Fucking yourself in, Pete. Scratch that. Make that four bottles of Jack. <laughs> <laughs> Each. <laughs> Good oh, lord. Yeah. Boys, Have you ever read that um, the the dirt the Motley Scott Crue autobiography? I've heard no. about that. Like, and it's all from different perspective of their yeah. perspectives. Yeah, they each the tell night. the same story. Yeah, <laughs> it's a fucking it's an eye opener. That thing, read man. That. And that that was like pre internet days. So that was before people had camera phones and shit like that. So back in those like late eighties, early nineties parties days, especially because heroin was so fucking big on the scene back then. Like, oh, and it yeah. was just synonymous with musicians at the time. And it's just. <sighs> They'd just be like, Th- hey, them rolling. going on tour with fucking um, Black Sabbath and some of the shit that Ozzy Osbourne used to get up to, you can fully tell why Ozzy is the way he is now. <laughs> you know what I mean? Sharon, Sharon. <laughs> Apparently, he just what decided fuck, to take, is that? Like take LSD every day for a year to see what would happen. For a year. Yeah, oh, for geez, a year. That guy is <laughs> Funniest thing, man. I remember watching season one of the Osbournes. He's there on the couch. The home. They've got a home phone ringing on the wall. Sharon. <laughs> What the fuck is that? <laughs> it's like the phone's ringing. What? Like, just didn't comprehend what it was. Like he didn't didn't know. But Ozzy Osbourne, fucking oh. absolute legend. If uh, if you're hanging in there, knock off fans. He's actually coming on episode twelve, so <laughs> he's only two away. But uh, we'll sandwich him in there. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I think you're on LSD now, bro. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> School night rave, <laughs> fucking. If you, what would your, uh, what would your top three podcast guests be? Do you reckon, alive or dead? For this, um, I'd have to go somewhat sports related for mine. I think just because I'd, a lot of historians and things like that. Whilst I'd be familiar with them, I wouldn't be able to touch base on a deeper level. That's but, true. Uh, yeah. For mine, uh, golf for daily. No, nah, yeah, well, he, he would. Pr- he'd probably be in my top ten, but um, Long John Daly would be. But uh, top three. Tyson, like it just out and out has to be him. He would be one. Um, Jordan. You take Tyson over Ali? Yes. Because he's actually gettable now for us. <laughs> 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 you know what I mean? Like, yeah. Muhammad ain't coming on, man. No, no well, I, I said alive or dead. Oh, right. Yeah, um, yeah I would. I'd take, I'd take Mike yeah. over Muhammad. That's just me personally. Like, I know Ali's the greatest and all of that, but... Uh, to be able to pick Mike's brain, I think he would have le- lived a fucking loose. <laughs> they both, <laughs> as they both have some fucking stories for man. sure. They'd be able to tell you tell you plenty. Uh, Jordan two, uh, Tiger Woods three. All black, everything. So yeah, definitely. <laughs> <laughs> got, got some. Got some about those BBCs, man. <laughs> <laughs> my porn watching transitions uh, to my podcast tastes too. Like transcends my life and shit. What about you, Danny? <laughs> Oof, I don't know. I think I'd, um, I think I'd maybe go down uh, the musical path as well. I'd probably love to fucking, don't know what sort of guest he'd be, but I'd love to talk to Kirk Cobain. Um, and I think uh, somebody is he trying to feed out. him the whole hour? <laughs> so what do you reckon of this? He's just man? on the nod. Yeah, <laughs> like, just not interested. Well, what, your wife was a co- co- is it Courtney? Courtney, yeah, yeah no, she she can stay at home. Hopefully, it doesn't no, bring yeah, her. Ask her. <laughs> it wasn't her who did it. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah oh, hopefully. Man. But um, fuck, I don't know. I'd have to say somebody Craig tri- David, trippy and really old. <laughs> yeah, definitely, <laughs> definitely. <laughs> Craig David, <same> <laughs> CD <laughs> bar. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'd go like if you could speak Latin or something like that. I'd get somebody like fucking Aristotle or somebody from like nah. crazy Roman times. You'd or be something. way Marcus smarter Aurelius. than that fucking idiot, man. Because <laughs> he, he might have set the foundation, but yeah. you try to talk a conversation to him now. What would he be saying? Yeah. Do you know what ramblings. the interesting thing is, though, bro? I um, uh, there's a book called Meditations, which was basically Marcus Aurelius, who was like one of the last emperors of um of the Roman Empire before they fucking they all got lead poisoning or whatever. But um, and uh, the book is basically what 
was probably his personal journal at the time. But back in the day, they didn't really write a personal journal like we would. It was more his, you know, his little philosophical tidbits about like what's a good way to live in society and how mm. should... Because he was obviously the emperor, so that was what his... like, yeah. And he was known as the sort of like the philosophical emperor and shit like that. But you read this stuff and it's it's basically just these little excerpts and stuff like that. But even, you know, putting aside the stuff about like having a having a slave boy and fucking shit like that it's so fucking relevant to today man like even in today's society that it's just like the way that it is to fucking live as human beings and shit like that hasn't really changed that much it's all the superficial shit that's changed you know like our fucking clothes and the shit we do with our time and all that sort of stuff but the core sort of approach to like how you interact with other people and you do wrong by somebody else and the ramifications and those sorts of things don't really fucking change that much and you read it and it's like fuck this is so Just relevant timeless and so yeah mm. yeah it's trippy but yeah i'd probably marcus then, aurelius marcus aurelius meditations you can borrow the book if you want um but uh maybe maybe einstein as well i don't know like i'd, I'd you'd have to go big eh? Mm. like but um but you're right in terms of like finding a common ground that i could question them on that mm. that's that's a different box of frogs as well what about you rosie you're obviously not ho- running a podcast now but if you could invite yet. three yet you're gonna blow up after this i don't know how many facebook bro your fucking got, profile uh, is going to be raised massive after this get ready to get ouija board and get, <laughs> get ready to get famous rosie that's all i'm saying bro um yeah, yeah. Who, who would uh if you were to have some like Three people alive or dead to a dinner table. You what, what, with, yeah. what, do, what do you reckon? Oh, that's a, I've been sitting here trying to think of three, actually. Lockyer, um, Wally Lewis, yeah, Petro. I, I was going to say, I've, <laughs> I've lived in Brisbane all my life. Yeah. Like, <laughs> I'd, I'd probably get Wayne Bennett. I'd, yep. Yeah, I just I fucking love the man, you know. Yeah, it'd be good to pick his brain. Oh. It was at Strathpine in uh, the school the other day doing a lecture for like referees and shit. Really? Yeah, yeah. It's, it's yeah we we could probably tee that up here at the knockoff. We, we, we our, our, we're that famous that um, that reach. We could get Wayne. We'll just dub out what we sort of talked about earlier with him <laughs> and shit. But um, <laughs> he wouldn't be too mad at us. I don't yeah, think we we actually played props to Wayne yeah, too. I, I was absolutely sort of yeah. From memory, I was telling people to stay out of his business. I think. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. No, one hundred percent. He's so. he's like. In my books, he's the fucking human of the century for what he's done with it, with his life. So we'll get um, Aussie then Wayne, Aussie, Ooh, yeah. Yeah. Aussie episode twelve, Wayne Lucky thirteen, Aussie, <laughs> yeah, interesting, yeah. boom. <laughs> yeah, I um, I I probably go Michael Jordan as well. Yeah, just he'd have some stories, the but greatest, um, yeah. wouldn't you love to have uh, the who's those blokes who did all those stupid fucking movies and shit, Jackass, oh, mate? I think you've said it before, but yeah, you fucking. Sit down with those cunts, fucking hell. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I agree with what oh, you yeah. said. That would be unbelievable. Yeah, you'd be able to go. T- they have stories for days. I think they'd have you in stitches with those guys if you were to, like, look, just off the cuff, just tell us. Like, they'd have stories coming out their ears, yeah. wouldn't they? A lot of them. And we're like, oh, we got a story in the like, Nah, yeah, that's yeah, not a fucking like story. Like, anyway, <laughs> <laughs> Outrageous lifestyle those guys have lived, man. And similar to ours is going to be, man. Like yeah, except uh, <laughs> minus all the fucking crippling injuries <laughs> yeah. at like not even 40. Deviated septums and shit. Oh, <laughs> not going to happen. Man. Yeah, I guess, you know, you had to see that shit was coming. You had to see, you know, you, you're you doing these stunts where you just purposefully fucking yourself up so badly. The bull and, one uh, was just the craziest thing. Surely you can't, you can't get away with it, you know? Like those guys would have rough niggling injuries. Definitely, man. Well, speaking of fucking yourself up badly, I'm going to go watch the... A couple of these boys bomb in front of the new uh, Bachelorette. <laughs> Benny, Dave, always a pleasure. Never a chore with either of you lads. Really appreciate you coming on. We've uh, laid out for the finals fever for all you footy fans. Multi-bet up some of our picks. Dare say follow me with how I've been going recently, but uh, <laughs> fucking get on board. <laughs> And uh, I think we'll be back next week with potentially another midweeky. We're just in the uh, process of securing a guest that's looking like it's going to be an MMA one for you guys. So, uh, yeah, stay tuned. Be good to each other. Thanks heaps, Dave and Benny. Appreciate it. We'll uh, talk soon. See you next week.